What's going on, guys? It's Coltior here, bringing you, very likely, my final CI narration ever, pending something crazy happening. After this, we've got uh, two or less matchups per round, and Callus usually likes to take the reins himself once we've only got a couple games left, so fair enough to him. And since it's the last CI, as you are all well aware by this point, um, yeah, last CI narration for me, and I've ended up with a banger to end on. We've got Rob Jr. versus Super Epic Ampharos, my good friend. And I'll start with Rob Jr. on the left. He is a player very much capable of using any archetype well, and very much capable of mixing up those archetypes multiple times throughout the set. He can go from a bland star me ments tss to mix off the next game or special off with a reg ice and that can make him a little dangerous to prep for um but probably equally if not more of a headache to prep for is c as he's known for bringing crazy crazy stuff like salic berry glaily and lychee berry baton pass zapdos to support a physical sweep or triple Salak Berry double fighter teams, just off the wall shit like that. And he is still very much capable of playing more normal teams with, you know, your Skarms, your Claydols, your Metagross, your sub CM Rachi likes that one very much. So yeah, definitely definitely two players who going into this match, you cannot really be sure what they're going to load. But what you can be sure is both of these players are going to play super, super well. So I'm really looking forward to this game. We're going to set the speed to slow right off the bat. And worth noting, it's an upper bracket matchup. So whoever loses is not quite out of the tour. And probably not what C was hoping to get on his turn one in game one. He got an explosion into the Magneton as Ment switched out with his Metagross. So Mag's down 5-5, five to five, but Metagross almost certainly be in a more important role on uh, C's team than the Mag was, especially if, obviously, there's no Skarm. A couple switches later and C reveals his Zapdos is Protect and Toxic, and Rob Jr.'s response is going to be his own Toxic Zapdos. And C maybe hoping Rob would continue to try and 1v1 there. He goes for a Light Screen. Obviously, it would make T-Bolt do next to nothing, but Blissey doesn't really care about it with Seismic Toss. Blissey also gets toxic, but there's no Doug follow-up to try and abuse that chip. There's just a Swampert. Now, with Light Screen, HP Grass is not going to do nearly enough, but Toxic, you still have to get out of the way of that. And there's Jirachi, so... Hmm. Sub-CM looking very possible here. Decides to just switch out, though, and Rob also seems to respect that possibility. He goes for a Roar, which would have prevented any kind of setup shenanigans. And reveals C's fourth Pokemon, Suicune. So, one unrevealed for both players, as Rob reveals he was running a Skyrim Mag team. And C, I'd say it's unlikely his last is Claydol, but it's not impossible. Claydol, or... Starmy, I guess, could fit there, for sure. So, not impossible for him to remove the spikes, potentially, if they go up. They have not gone up yet, however. As a couple switches later, we've paralyzed Bliss, switching out of the Swampert, getting out of the way of potentially a Focus Punch, which does not come, but Hydro Pump, and that is almost certainly off Pert doing 41 there, or at least a very speed-invested Skarm. Which it might be, because it is faster than the Swampert. It might just be a uh, Skarm that hits like 200 speed or something and has very little bulk. Well, for Rob's sake, he better hope the last isn't something like a Starmie, because he goes for the Toxic instead of preserving his uh, Skarm, making it a 4-5 game. But, crucially, C has two Toxic Pokemon, and Rob only has one which is a Zapdos that could very likely have rest, and sees very, well, very clearly doesn't. So it remains to be seen how that's going to play out, but C is certainly on a much faster timer 
with a spike down on his side and the multiple toxic mods. Protect on the Swampert going to rack up that toxic damage even more. Luckily for C, there's no sand that's going to wear down the Zapdos even farther. And stays in, goes for the toxic again. He's going to get a tiny bit more chip on the Blissey out of that. But in exchange, Zapdos is basically dead. And that doesn't help. Overprediction toxic on a stay in from Rob. So now Zapdos is barely alive at 6%. If there was sand up, it would die instantly, but nothing of the sort. And here comes Swampert as Zapdos comes in from Rob. Now, unlikely that Zapdos is HP Grass last, but not impossible. I'd say it's probably just a rest zap on this kind of team, but, well, he switches back to Blissey, which seems to support that theory, and no rest or refresh or anything from C, so that Toxic's here to stay, it seems. Seismic Toss and Earthquake, respectively, the Pert is faster and dies to its Toxic, leaving Blissey at 47. Do we see a Doug? We see a Ments. That is going to force the Blissey out. And it's going to do a whole hell of a lot more than that. It's going to kill it, which could make C's special attackers, especially the Jirachi, a bit more of a pain. Obviously, there is still a Spideff Zap. Oh, and that's going to be quite relevant. HP Flying Crit as Pert curses up. That Pert would have had a, a lot better chance of dealing with the Jirachi if it didn't just eat a crit. And Curse Protect, probably Earthquake Ice... Yeah, Earthquake and Ice Beam last, if I had to guess. So it's definitely got a move to hit the Ments. And it's Earthquake is looking pretty good against the rest of C's team, because remember, that Zapdos is basically dead. This is effectively a 3-3 game here, folks. And Rob finally reveals his Ments set to be physical. We don't see Leftovers, so that is almost certainly a Choice Band Ments, unless it's something like... Lum DD that's almost never seen ever. And C does end up sacrificing his own Zapdos to get a T-Bolt off on Rob's Zapdos, which, as we've said, is probably rest. Might not matter, but Mens can force it out here, and if he can keep doing that, he won't have to worry about rest. And here's DD. The earlier HP Flying Crit really coming into play now. And so does that Rock Slide crit. That might just put it into HP Flying Range. Hold on. I think it's barely going to live. No, it dies. That is really unfortunate for that Swampert. That Swampert got double crit. And that meant C didn't even have to go for a Fly or a second DD or anything. The Pert is just dead. Now, obviously, at minus one, it's not going to kill Rob CB Mints. So it does get forced out there. But... Hidden Power Flying is going to blank the Jirachi. It is going to hit to a kill the Salamence. Oh, not quite with leftovers. High roll? No, nothing of the sort. No sand meant that did not to a KO. However, C doesn't go for a Dragon Dance. He just goes for Rock Slide, which comes up short. And he is slower, so... Hidden Power Flying again, and Rob gets his own crit. Hold on. Rob might actually have this one... His HP Flying is going to kill the Jirachi, and he's obviously faster than the Suicune. Might come down to if Suicune can kill the Zapdos with DD Ments, and I think it should be able to. CM there, obviously the rest Zap T-Bolt's going to do very little to a plus one Suicune, even though it's a stab T-Bolt. And Ice Beam is going to do a lot. Yeah, you have to rest here if you're Rob. No, he goes for the T-Bolt crit instead. Thinks that's his best win path, which it probably is if he doesn't have a... Uh, yeah, he doesn't have Sleep Talk with that set, so probably needed the crit there, and it didn't come. Crit or even a para would have helped, and at this point, it's all down to... Can you get one Rock Slide flinch? Two Rock Slide flinches, I think you would need? Goes for a crit instead, and it doesn't come. Unfortunate for Rob there, getting double crit by his pert really... Messed up how he had to handle that uh, DD Mets, and it was still, still a close game, even with that. So, probably not how he wanted that to go, even after the uh, strong start with Meta booming into the mag on a Skarm team. So, unfortunate for uh, Rob, that series of events, but 
C is ahead 1-0 now, and Rob at least, uh, even if he does potentially lose this game too, at least has the loser's bracket to redeem himself. Although, frankly, the loser's bracket is a terrifying prospect to go into at this point, so we'll have to see what happens in game two. C playing for a win and Rob playing for a comeback. Game one, we've got, t or game two, we've got Tita versus Metacham. Metacham extremely obviously favored in that matchup. And a focus punch, how much is it going to do? 55, I don't think, that could be choice banded depending on the Zapdos EVs. And no lefties. So I'd say it's, oh, it's not choice banded. We do see it switches moves. And was it faster than the Zapdos? It was faster. So yeah, Rob switching makes a lot of sense. You've got to respect Rock Slide there. He obviously knows his Zap spread. He probably knows if that's CB Metacham or not. And Shadow Ball going to pretty much whiff into the Metagross. Although, crucially, it's non-lefties meta. And I'd say that's probably CB based on it doing 32 to that Suicune. And pretty quickly, it's a 5-6 to six with not a whole lot of damage taken on C side. Poor start for Rob. However, this Jirachi could do some damage. It's got a Snorlax facing it down right now. See, Rob has two normal resists revealed. Does he go to either of them? He opts to stay in and attack, exploiting Lax slightly frailer defenses than the other special walls. And it is still going to be a 2 it kill with Earthquake for C. However, if Rob wanted to claim more chip, he could put that lack super low, but he decides the Jirachi staying alive is more, more valuable for now. And Earthquake is going to be how he's going to chip the Snorlax for, for now. It might... It'll definitely kill with sand, and it might kill straight up here. It gets a bit of a low roll, unfortunate. And that does mean... That Swampert took a 1,000 from return. It took 43? That must have been like a super offensive Swampert there. And nonetheless, it is going to be a trade, although with C dying to sand, he gets the advantage. And that advantage is going to be swiftly reset as Metagross booms the Suicune. Rob thinks that's his best bet to handle it, and... Looking at the dead Zapdos and the other members of his team, I would agree. In comes, as Rob reveals his Jirachi again, in C reveals his Ments. And Earthquake, as it's faster, so could be a... Oh, no lefties. Might be another CB Ments here, folks, especially because it was faster. No, this might actually be the DD Lum Ments that we've never seen but always talk about. Well, here it is, and it's going to crucially miss Rock Slide as Rob goes for DD and DD again. This is exactly what you want to be seeing if you're Rob. You want to be seeing those misses for sure. And now with two DDs against a potentially frail team, if C's only checking the back as like a Metagross or something, Magneton, that is not going to live a plus two Earthquake, I can tell you that. Yeah, if C doesn't have, like, a full health Swampert in the back ready for this, he might lose on the spot. A Swampert, a Flygon, there's a couple Mons that would get there for him. And he might not have either of those, given that he's trying to go for another Intimidate with the Salamence. He gets one, but he stays in and dies to the Rock Slide. So now at plus one, something like a Metagross will live the Earthquake, however... There's a tire in the back that's at full health. Might live a mash, but switches in right now. But he doesn't go for it. And that means he's probably a slower tower or one that doesn't live mash. So now he's got a bank on this Metacham not having Brick Break. Or for some reason being slower than the tower. And I'd say Fire Blast, that's a mixed tower right there. Probably was dead to mash if it switched in immediately. So let's see, is he... C is not running a terrible Metacham set without Brick Break. And that means the game is over for Rob. <laughs> what, an, what a fast set. I had that on slow speed and it was still zooming right by. Apologies if my narration couldn't quite keep up at points. But yeah, that was that was a blazing fast set right there. Both Both pretty short games when all said and done. I mean... Game 1 was 40 turns, but when you look at Rob's turn, it could have easily been equipped to play a 500-turn game. 
and getting only to 40 is quite something with that. And then game two, both players brought very offensive squads and less than 20 turns. We've got a narrow victory for C. It looked pretty close there for a second with that uh, with that DD Mets DDing twice. And if it DDed a third time as the Magneton came in, it might have actually swept on the spot. Which, I mean, that's a really difficult play to make as Rob when you're gonna die to a uh, you're gonna die to the next rock slide. You've already dodged one. Do you take it? Do you not? He decided he'd try his luck, and he did not get what he needed, which would have been a crit on the Metagross. So unfortunate way for Rob's set to end in a. Uh, with that game one, but game two was at least more clean. So there's that, and C is going to advance to uh, the winners' finals, I believe. Versus, and turn a, turn your ears away if you have not heard the winner yet, folks. It is C versus Bad Dummy in the uh, upper bracket finals, and Rob Jr. is moving on to face I. I uh, we don't know who Rob Jr. is going to face yet, because Fakes and McMegan still haven't played, despite it being 10pm on a Sunday, so that's Roar for you. But yeah, Rob still in this tournament, C also still in this tournament, and I really hope we see some good games from them uh, in the upcoming rounds, because they are two of my favorite players to watch, for sure. And this is a really entertaining set, I'll have to ask C what that Mets actually was, if it was DD Lum or not. But yeah. And I'll have to... I, I do wonder about that Pert spread as well. I've never seen a Pert take 43 from Snorlax. It was return over body slams. That also contributed to the extra power. In, interesting set all around, and I really liked it. And I really like both players' teams. But I won't take any more of your time, fellas. I hope you have a great uh, a great night and a great time watching the rest of CI. Ciao.